Are you having trouble killing the affected broodmother? The affected broodmother does so much damage and you're not getting healed fast enough. Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily defeat the infected broodmother. And I highly recommend to watch this video from the beginning to the very end to get all the tips and you don't miss out on any important information. So thanks for tuning in. This is the life of a gamer. Okay, so first let's go over the infected broodmother stats. So giving it a quick peep, its weakness is fresh and it's resistant to salty and spicy. Now the infected broodmother has three phases, meaning that it will revive two times. And in each increasing phase, the infected broodmother will get buffed and have additional new attacks. But I'll be going over tips and tricks on the fight so you can easily defeat the infected broodmother. So let's check this out. Now, are you ready for the ultimate ninja, scimitar assassin, infected broodmother, destruction, technique, strategy? So first going over the equipment, and I do want to mention that this is the hardest boss, so all your equipment should be max level. So for the weapon, now I did test all the weapons and the toenail scimitar was the best weapon to use against the infected broodmother. Now I upgraded this weapon to fresh because the infected broodmother is weak to fresh. And this weapon inflicts the infection debuff, which reduces the enemy's attack speed and attack damage. For the shield, I'll be using the fire and shield for the perk block corrosion, which lowers the enemy's defense when you block. For the trinket, I'm going to use the Thor's pendant. Now now there are better trinkets to use but the Thor's pendant is easier to get. Now the Thor's pendant provides bonus stats and here are the stats it provides. The Thor's pendant is one of the best trinkets in the game. And for the armor set, I'm going to use the Assassin's Armor set. The Assassin's Armor set will provide bleed damage, crit stun, and more crit chances. Now the Assassin's Armor set is light armor so you'll need to perfect block or block to negate some of the damage. Now there are other equipments that you can use depending on the situation. Now if you're having trouble perfect blocking or blocking in general, then the roly poly armor set will be better suited for you. But be aware that it'll take a lot longer to defeat the infected broodmother, and you'll need to use a lot more healing items. Now at this time of the game, healing items should be very easy to get, so it's okay if you use 100 plus healing items for this boss. Now the infected broodmother has a dust attack, so you can use the termite armor instead, which will help with the dust attack from the infected broodmother. And for the trinket, you can use fungal charm, which is an important item if you plan to fight the infected broodmother on the hardest difficulty, because the fungal bombs can one-shot you. But this item is very rare, it has like a 1% drop rate, so more than likely you won't have this item. So I won't use this trinket because it's rare, but if you have it, I highly recommend to use this trinket over the Thor's Pendant. The Thor's Pendant is just easier to get because you can just find it. Another trinket that will be useful in this fight will be the Suspicious Ice Cat. It will give your attacks additional fresh damage, which will be good for killing the infected broodmother faster. But this item is also very rare and it has a 1% drop rate. So since this trinket is rare, I won't be using this item, but I'll be using the Thor's Pendant instead. Now for the mutations, I'm going to use Coupe de Grass for more critical hit chance, Spicy Safety for the stabbing resist because the affected broodmother does a lot of stabbing damage, Blade Master for my weapon which lowers the attack damage of the bugs and reduces stamina use when using a sword, Trapper Peep Bar for increased critical hit damage, and Corporate Kickback. Now Corporate Kickback will be one of the most useful mutations in this fight because you will be blocking a lot, and blocking attacks has a chance to trigger effect that will replenish your life, so this will be one of your main sources of healing other than your smooth these. And for the foods, you can have the Black Ox Burger for increased max health and damage resist or the Spider Slider for increased critical hit chance. Now since I'm going to perfect block most of the infected broodmother's attacks, I'll be using the Spider Slider, but if you're having trouble blocking and taking a lot of damage, then the Black Ox Burger will be better. Just be aware that meal buffs don't stack compared to smoothies. Now for the smoothies, you basically want to use all of them because they do stack. So like Boss Sauce, Liquid Rage, Human Food, Buzz on the Rocks, Boost Juice, Waspy Doat, and Green Machine. Now the smoothie buffs only last for 3 minutes, so it's best to use smoothies on phase 3. But you can use the meal buffs starting on phase 2, because the meal for the spider slider will last 16 minutes, and for the black ox burger it will last 20 minutes. Now you will need a lot of healing items if you are having trouble blocking, and I recommend using any beefy smoothies, because they'll heal you the most. You're going to maybe use a couple beefy smoothies if you're good at blocking, but if you're not good at blocking, then you'll need to use like 60 to 90 plus beefy smoothies, because every time you get hit by a certain attack by the affected broodmother, she applies a debuff that decreases your healing that will stack until the fight ends. So if you don't block, your smoothies will barely heal you and you'll need a ton of smoothies to recover. Now the easiest way to destroy the affected broodmother is first change the difficulty to mild to make the fight easier. Changing the difficulty to mild will also pause the game when you're in your inventory. So you can just pause the fight and heal up when you're in trouble. And once you defeat the infected broodmother, you can change the difficulty back anytime. 
Okay, so now let's start the fight. And depending on how well you can block, you either want to use a roly poly armor set if you have trouble blocking, or the assassin's armor set if you're pretty decent at blocking. And I recommend to not use any of your food buffs in the beginning until phase two for meals or phase three for smoothies. Because the first phase is really easy and the toenail skimitar does so much damage to the infected brood mother that you shouldn't need to use any food buffs. And just be aware that since we are playing on mild difficulty, if you're in trouble or about to die, you can go into your inventory. This will pause the game and allow you to heal. Up. So now let's insert the recipe and begin phase one. Fight! Now the infected broodmother has similar attacks to the original broodmother, so she should not be too difficult to handle in phase one. Make sure you practice perfect blocking her 5-hit combo, because she'll do this attack often and in different speeds on later phases. Getting hit with the 5-hit combo will apply a permanent debuff till the end of the fight that reduces your healing. This debuff will stack, so blocking the 5-hit combo is very important if you don't want to waste your healing items. But using a lot of healing items in this fight is okay, because this is basically the final endgame secret boss, and it's very easy to get a ton of healing items at this point. Now she will have a jump back lunge attack when she is retreating from you. Just try to block her attack so she does not apply any debuffs to you. Okay, so once you defeat phase 1, you can use your meal buff now, or phase 2, or wait until phase 3. But for the smoothies, wait until phase 3. Now personally, I'm going to use all the food buffs on phase 3. Okay, so now let's start phase 2. Now she will have the same moves as before, plus additional attacks. She will now have a couple fungal bomb attacks that will also heal her if she's near them. She also attacks faster, so get ready to block more. Now one move she has is that she'll scream and a bunch of fungal bombs will fall in the area. Now these bombs will do a lot of damage to you and will apply a couple debuffs on you. So it's best to avoid these fungal bombs as much as possible. Now these bombs can one shot you on the hardest difficulty. Another attack she'll do is lay a fungal bomb under her. Now this is the best time to attack the infected broodmother because it'll take about 8 seconds for the fungal bomb to explode and by then you can destroy it or back away. Attacking the fungal bomb and destroying it will be good if you're near it because if you don't don't destroy it and it explodes, it will heal the infected group mother. But if you can't get to the fungal bomb, then backing away and dodging it is okay to recover. She will also have a side lunge attack. She will lunge very quickly to the side and immediately attack you. So the best thing to do is immediately block to the side she lunged to. And you should be able to block the attack right away. The trick is that you'll know the attack will be coming because she'll lunge to a side very fast. So once you know it's coming and know what to do, this move is very easy to perfect block. She will also upgrade her backwards lunge attack that applies a dust in the area. When she does this, it's best to just step away from the dust and just get ready to block her next attack. You don't want to stay in the dust because it will slow you and apply a ton of debuffs on you. One major debuff that it applies is a major healing debuff that greatly reduces your healing. So you want that debuff to go away before using any of your healing items. Having the termite armor will help in this situation if you're having trouble moving away from the dust. Now just be careful around the fungal bombs and block her attack so you don't get stacks of debuffs applied to you. Some of the debuffs will last until the fight ends. So the more blocks you attack and the less fungal bombs hit you, the less debuffs you will have throughout the fight.
Okay, so we defeated phase two. Now let's get ready for phase three. Now phase one and phase two are pretty easy if you know what to do, but phase three is on a different level. The effective blue mother is way stronger, way faster, and her attacks are upgraded. Now you want to use all your food buffs in phase three because phase three is no joke. The idea is like before, dodge her fungal bombs and block her attacks. Now in phase 3, the infected broodmother has a new attack that she shoots a fungal bomb at you. But she rarely uses this attack over her other attacks in phase 3. If she does the backwards lunge and applies the dust in the area, move away from the dust as soon as possible. And when she lunges to the side very fast, get ready to immediately block the side she lunges to because she will attack right when you turn. And when she screams, get ready to move around to dodge the fungal bombs. Now just take your time and block as much as you can to avoid the debuffs. So the trick is to be patient and try to predict the infected blue mother's next attack. Position yourself to not get hit by the fungal bombs and try blocking her attacks. Take your time and wait for an opening. It's better to have a longer fight and defeat the infected blue mother instead of rushing in and keep constantly dying over and over again. Now this is her new attack. The infected brood mother just shot a fungal bomb at me, so the idea is just to keep moving around to dodge this attack. Now I'm going to pause right before I kill the infected brood mother, because since I was able to block most of the infected brood mother's attacks, I did not need to use any healing items, and the mutation corporate kickback was healing me instead. But if you are in trouble and in a pinch, you can go into your inventory and heal up. Since we are playing on mild difficulty, the game will pause when you go into your inventory. Now really quickly, this is another fight I had with the infected broodmother with a different build. And I took some damage to use the smoothies and pause the game. Now I have a lot of stacks of the healing debuff and I have the one major healing debuff effect from the dust. And as you can see, the beefy smoothies barely healed me. And if you're in this situation, you may need like 20 to 30 smoothies to get to full health. So I would recommend to bring 90 plus smoothies if you're having trouble blocking and dodging the infected broodmother. Now smoothies are easy to get, so using a lot of smoothies is okay. So the idea is to pause and heal if needed if you're taking a lot of damage. Well, let's go ahead and return to the other fight. And there you have it. The infected brood mother has been assassinated by the ninja Skimitar assassin. You're that ninja. Now once you finally defeat the infected broodmother, you will unlock the mutation Spore Lord. She also drops the infected Fang, infected Venom, and infected Chunk. And once you're done, you can change the difficulty back to the difficulty you were playing on before. Okay, so thanks for checking out this video on how to defeat the infected broodmother. I also have other videos on defeating other bugs, so if you're having trouble with other bugs, definitely check those out. And stay tuned for more tips, tricks, and tutorial videos. Thumbs if you enjoyed, sub to check out what's next, but of course, go out there, keep grinding, and always stay grounded.